Welcome back to the Fixed Ops Roundtable, and we are humbled and honored to welcome back our resident experts, Ask the Experts, Randy and Kim Brinkman from Randy Brinkman Solutions. Uh, Kim and Randy, welcome back to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Well, thanks, Ted. Hey, Ted. Well, thanks for welcoming us. We appreciate it. You folks have been really busy. You're tearing it up out there. I see you everywhere. You are you are training at some of the biggest dealerships uh, in the nation. Uh, I saw just recently, not long ago, uh, Randy, uh, you were both out at uh, Longo Toyota in El Monte, California. Yeah, you talk about being humbled at the beginning. We are. Uh, we spent two weeks there. And we worked with their leaders for their four dealerships within the Penske Motor Motor Group. And uh, we had, uh, it's kind of fun. It, it, it's fun to find the little things that make the big differences. Yeah, they're just a wonderful group of people. Very positive, very um, progressive in terms of their training. Um, they're very big on training their people. They just have a great uh, culture there. And it's very uplifting and fun to work with. And uh, we just really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed the people there. So. And it speaks a lot to your capabilities. The fact that the biggest dealership in the world brings you in to get better. So uh, that says a whole lot. So congratulations uh, on all the success that you're having. And, uh, you know, since we got together in March, uh, there have been some questions from our audience that have come up. And uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and ask the experts today on behalf of the Fixed Ops Roundtable uh, uh, viewers some of these questions uh, that have really resonated to the top. And the first one, uh, Kim, I'll come to you. Uh, the first question is, what should I be concerned with or what should I be measuring in my service department? And, um, you know, that's, that's actually probably a very common question. It is. And Ted, that can always be a moving target. So we like to look at the basics. I mean, what do we really want to focus on? And the things that I really focus or have our team focus on is selling our total hours, our total hours sold. Number one. Number two is our unapplied time. And number three is discounts. And, you know, when you look at total hours sold, it's that's your inventory. Your technician's time is your inventory to sell. Did I sell all that time? The next one is unapplied time. Randy, you want to try? Well, to yeah, that? you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg? I mean, total hours and unapplied time, they're kind of together. Uh, if I concentrate on my unapplied time and make it go away, I sell more hours. And if I sell more hours, I cover my unapplied time. So both come hand in hand. Discounts. Uh, why are we discounting? We, we do so much in menu pricing and things of this nature. Uh, nothing wrong with discounting, but if you are interested in your effective labor rate, whether your pricing is working or not, you have to make the decision of, is the discount done by the advisor? Is it done by management? Do we have a coupon that's actually working, that's bringing us business to get the hours? So concentrate on your inventory. 90% of your problems in a dealership are found in an inventory. 90% of your solutions are found in an inventory 100% of the time. But, you know, interesting to that question as I think about it, what should I be measuring? Yep. Maybe you might want to turn that at your own dealership and to your advisors, ask them, what are your important metrics? What are you striving for every day? You may be surprised. What if they aren't on the same page with you? So think about what you're doing. Did no. they come in with their unproven practices or whatever it would be? And it's they are the one leading the charge or are they following, following your direction and buying into what you want to? So in short, hours first, okay. unapplied time. And the short answer would be uh, check your discounts. And as a follow-up to that question, how often should I be looking at that and measuring that? I imagine just, just doing it once a month Every is day. not going to cut it. No, you've got to be constantly looking at that. You've got to know every day. I need every to know day. every day that unapplied time, especially in California. I mean, if you're not watching your unapplied time, I mean, you're just you're, you're paying ridiculous amounts of money out, which 
it's all about managing your inventory. You've heard us say this before. A new vehicle not sold today can be sold tomorrow. A used vehicle not sold today can be sold tomorrow. A part not sold today can be sold tomorrow. Technician's time not sold today is gone forever. You can't wait for the end of the month. It's too late. Every day is the last day of the month. And the larger your dealership and the more technicians you have, it's even more crucial to look at it every day just because of the velocity model that goes attached with that. It's that perishable commodity. And it's probably the most profitable thing that inventory wise that a dealership carries. Pre-supply problem. Yes. I mean, I've got three. Before we had the supply issues and the windfalls that we have in the vehicle sales departments right now, I have three piles of money. One has $78, the other one has $35, and the other has a dollar or you owe me. I just described service, parts, and vehicle sales before the supply chain. You hold 70 some, you hold 70 some dollars of every, every $100 you sell in service. Parts, if you're not big in wholesale, you're going to hold about $35. For every and then where were we in selling vehicles back and hold back if we can remember back? So in the vehicle sales department, right now is the good old days. So uh I don't know that we'll ever see this again. But when so. this changes, when this changes, it's gonna change hard and fast. I mean, when we get back to everything being as it was in the, in you know, years ago in terms of supply chain and it's in terms of us getting vehicles, new vehicles coming in. When that changes, all of a sudden you're going to see incentives from the manufacturers and it's, 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 you know, it'll yep. go back to not making money in, and, in you, new, and, and you, well, not making money in new, but fixed ops is the backbone of our organization. So we have really got to be honed and have our people trained because this, this uh, situation is going to go on for a while. Yeah. So you got to, you've got to get those hours because let's face it, warranty is dropping off. Mm-hmm. And we'll continue. So you have to go after your inventory. Yeah. Here's an interesting question that came in, uh, Randy. I'll come to you on this one. If I record a lost sale and acquire the part, won't that count as two in my computer? What should we do? It gives you go with this. This Ted, have we ever come to a conclusion on lost sales? Have we ever in our industry? We've been talking about this for decades. Mm. But you know, to make to answer the question is yes, you're going to have two. Yeah, but you got to look at your system that you have. Your DMS system. Are you on Techion? Are you on CDK? Or are you on Reynolds? Each system, you know, does that a little differently. And Randy can kind of you know the quick answer that. is yes. What you're looking for in parts is one thing. You're looking for demand. Mm. You just don't say I don't have any Corvette hoods. What do we say? We order twelve. I mean, the only reason you have a part is people have been asking for it. That's your phase in. So it just kind of depends on how you want to look at the term lost sales because different computer systems look at it just a little bit different. But at the end of the day, here's the deal. Is it a lost sale in the eye of the dealership or the, a lost sale in the eye of the computer? It's a mm. lost sale in the eye of the computer. Basically, what you're trying to get to is first time fill rate. I want to be able to hand that part to a customer or a technician now. And we say, if you can't hand it, hit it. Hit the lost sale key. So so what if we change the term lost sale? Okay. Not in stock key. Would that make it make a lot more sense? Mm -hmm. It's the not in stock key. I want to record a demand. Now, certain systems that will accelerate things, for example, rentals, but CDK and all do not work that way. You have to go in and do a test to believe it yourself. But at the end of the day, I think there is more damage done by not recording a lost sale or missed opportunity than there is recording the lost sale and the part coming in, especially today. When so many automatic replenishment systems mm. reward us by allowing us to return anything that's ordered on a stock order. It's protecting. What's, what's the danger here? What is the danger here? But, but the misconception is our people that are working our parts counter are afraid to hit the lost sale key because their perception is, I hit that lost sale key and I'm going to have all this inventory 
coming at me and I don't want to be stuck with things yep. that are going to be obsolescence or I have a non-stock, uh, non-stock mm-hmm. stats part. So they're afraid to hit that, hit that key. And really, if we don't ever hit the key, we're never going to get the demand, need the demand. to tell us to bring the part in. Now, if you so, are a believer that if it's a not in stock key and you think this is really important to you, which probably 50% of our audience believes that and 50% doesn't. So whatever. But if you are a believer that you should hit the lost sale key, it's very easy to find out if you are getting compliance. All you need to do is every part that's a carryover, a vehicle that's a carryover for parts. In other words, we had to keep the guest car because I didn't have the parts. So I put an order in for it on the stock order, however I did it. The next day, pull up the part number. If no lost sale was recorded, you know what employee mm. is not in compliance, and we can have a training moment and a discussion to be able to explain this so that we're all on the same page. Because at the end of the day, Ted, if we don't have the parts, we can't turn the hour in the shop. We have technicians that are idle. We want to keep those technicians turning wrenches in their stalls. The name of the game is just keep those. Okay. And in California, there's your unapplied time. That's unapplied time. It's all, <laughs> it's all intermingled with each other. Okay. All right. Um, here's a good question. Any outside of the box ideas for acquiring techs? And I don't think we've ever had a chance to ask you a question like that before. Mm-mm. Well, sure. Depends on how far out of the box you want to go. And I think right now you need to do almost anything you can. Um, It's hard to get employees. Just go to your local restaurant. It's hard to get people to work, much less skilled people as technicians. So are we trying to fill a need of ours or should we try to fill a need of theirs? Mm. Now I have a stall in my mechanical shop that I would like to put a technician in. So I'm looking for a technician. Well, the tool truck just left and there's not a bunch of them hanging in the back that I can put off the shelf and put in there. So I've got to do something. So we've got a lot of dealers right now considering a three day work week. Hmm. Hire a technician to work three days. I can hire two technicians for that one stall. One works Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The other one works Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Now, who in the world can I get for that? Ted, you and I have a little bit of gray. So let's just pretend that we are technicians right now. We've been doing this since high school. Mm. So we're getting a little older, a little tighter, a little harder to get up in the morning. And ibuprofen is now our recreational drug <laughs> of choice. So I don't want to quit. I'm not ready to retire, but maybe I want to back off a little bit here. I'll work three days. I'll find a lot of attraction in that. Now, if I partner up with somebody else, quite frankly, as the general manager or the service manager, I don't care who comes in. As mm-hmm. long as if you want to work four and the other guy wants to work two or you want to work the, the week so the other can take vacation, I don't really care. But start thinking about three tens, perhaps. Mm. Now, Kim, what's another, what's another person that can find value you know, in this? Text with young family. People are having a difficult time finding childcare. So, or financially, it's just, you know, it just doesn't work for them, you know? So we look at it as if I can find a technician, a young technician that has a young family, they can work three days and their their spouse can work the other, the other three days. So it just anything mm. to do to attract people that it's not our typical, our typical environment anymore. I- but today. Finding people is tough. Finding, like Randy said, like finding technicians, it's really hard. So we have to check, really think outside the box to attract. You know, in your ad for a technician, if you've offered three days and you had a young individual with a young family with childcare concerns, both financially and time, uh, just finding them, uh, I can see. I can see somebody wanting to work three twelves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can see them work three twelves. How about somebody that lives really, really far from the somebody that lives far from the dealership? We have a son-in-law who's in the business and he would love to work 312s because they- he He'd drives, work 314s, but that's works, beside yeah, the point. He, he drives an hour and a half each way to the oh. So if, if, if you can find someone that 
that would be attractive to, that may work for you as well. You just have to let, you let the technician know. So, You're not going to make, you may not make as much money as you did working a five day week, but there, we can, we can. There's an offset to that. So, so don't always be looking to fill your needs. Look to see what will work for you. But there's a, there's a, a group of people out there that might find, uh, might find value in that. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. Let's move along. Um, and, and by the way, that is out of the box thinking. I like it. Um, any ideas to increase, and, and here's what some people don't like this word, upsells, but we yeah. all know what it means. Any ideas to increase additional sales? So increase your same day selling. Yeah. The first thing I would say is don't confuse your staff. If you have a pay plan that has an accelerator for effective labor rate hitting an average, uh, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. you might be negating the very thing that you want. Because when I get the multi point inspection, it's not for big tickets, it's for maintenance items. Maintenance items are not going to give you a high effective labor rate. So you're asking me for same day selling. I can't sell tires because I'm gonna I'm gonna lose money in my pay. So you've got to mm. make sure that you're not confusing uh, your staff by giving them a mixed message. What you what you're asking them to do is against their pay plan. Now to help with same day selling right now, Kim and I have instituted some uh, a little word track that we use. And Kim, we say we ask the guest, is this going to be a short term? vehicle ownership for you or a long-term vehicle ownership. And in today's environment, most people are saying this is going to be a long-term. And we do that ownership. at, we do that at write up at write up. And so we go, great. We want to help you. Uh, we do complimentary, uh, comprehensive, comprehensive, comprehensive complimentary, uh, inspection. And then we do that. So you will know, where you stand with your vehicle and we can take it from there. And the logic behind this is we asked them, is this going to be a long-term or a short-term ownership vehicle for you? When they tell you long-term, they are now thinking I have to take care of this because we all know the cheapest repair is maintenance. Yeah. We all know that. So now they're opened up a little bit to say, you know what? That makes sense. I'm going to keep this a long time. Tell me what I need because we want to ensure that this car performs and gives you the longevity that you're looking for. So, uh, Randy, go back. Give us the phrase again that uh, that Kim just gave us. When we're doing the walk around and so forth and we're finding it, first we have to get their initial concern. It's early. In, so we're early in the process. Yeah. Absolutely. We get their initial concern and so forth. And we say, Ted, a quick question for you. This particular vehicle, is this going to be a short-term ownership vehicle for you or a longer term ownership vehicle for you. The majority of the people with the prices of vehicles and the lack of available choices will tell you, I think this is going to be a long term vehicle. I mean, how many people are buying their leases out? They're turning them into long term vehicles. That's a great, that's a great thing to ask my, Kim, we should be asking every customer that at right. We believe that because it makes them yeah. stop for a minute, think, and they can actually see if I'm going to keep this for a longer time, I got to take care of this. And again, we want to tie that guest to our dealership. We want to, we want to tie that guest to our service department. Yeah. So we've got to do everything we possibly can to tie these people to our, to our. Okay. okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Last question for today. Um, my warranty total gross is going down. Anything I can do about that? <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, that's something we should have been looking at as a group collectively yesterday. Yeah. I mean, warranty is going down because we don't have new cars coming in. And that's going to be that's going to be a problem for us. So <clears throat> we've got to get really good at selling these uh, extended warranties through the OEM like Toyota Care Plus. We've got to make sure that we're offering that to every customer every time and just ensuring that we can get that customer coming in and stay stay loyal to our, our dealership. But other than that, we we really have to get good at selling customer pay. You know, a warranty is going down. Kim's right. It's going to continue to go down. We sold a thousand less cars this year at your dealership, at your yeah. dealership. That's a thousand less people coming in over the next three years. 
One of the things that we did, Ted, uh, over a year ago is we tried to convince our dealers to purchase as many one-year-old vehicles of your brand that you can find. Don't worry about your don't worry about your front end gross and selling them. Just acquire these vehicles. Then go ahead and turn around and sell them as fast as you can. <clears throat> go ahead and uh, get the F and I get a trade, but see if you can make sure that you put it in your area of responsibility to give you two more years worth of warranty. Here's another thing that I'm not sure that we do. We have a lot of people right now that are purchasing their leases out. Their lease comes to the end. They they just say, I'm going to buy it because of market conditions and so forth. So one of the questions that the sales department needs to do is to look at this customer and ask them the same question. You're buying the lease. Well done. Is this going to be a long-term vehicle for you? If so, let us help you. Let us do a complimentary, comprehensive, multi-point inspection on this vehicle for you so you will know. Now think about it. This would be a great time if your vehicle needs tires, if it needs brakes, if it needs service. Is there any accessory that you wish you would have had on this vehicle now that you're going to keep it? Yep. Let us do it now. Add that to the balance of the loan. You're only going to pay a couple dollars a month. The other thing is, may we certify this vehicle for you? With many manufacturers. And you asked this question again, and I left something out. Is this going to be a long-term vehicle or a short-term vehicle for you? They say long-term. You are going to finance this and hang on to your cash. Is that correct? That's another great question. Yeah. You are going to find, hang on to your cash and finance this. Very polite way of saying you probably don't have the money to buy it outright type of deal. But are you going to hang on to your cash? Or it's a very, it could be considered also, Randy, a very respectful question. Because Absolutely. Are you, are you one of the smart money people who's going to hang on to their cash? Precisely. Precisely. Let me help you. Since you are going to finance it by certifying this vehicle, depending upon your manufacturer, you will qualify for a lower interest rate. So now I'm bringing the shop together try, and now I've got a yeah. car certified okay. for warranty. I've got to take every opportunity that I can. Yeah. Whatever we can do to tie these customers to our dealership is what we have to do because we're going to have fewer cars in our service drive going forward. What I love about you guys is you do think out of the box and you got some great common sense answers. You got some great... You gave us some great new word tracks today, okay, that, w that are relevant right now on my service drive with my customers. Uh, Randy and Kim, um, I know you're busy and you're out there training dealerships like Longo, um, but if I have some questions as a GM or fixed ops or service or even a parts manager, how do I reach out to you? How do I find out more uh, about what you do as well? Well, we're owners that answer our own phone. We answer the phone and we, we answer that. our phone. It's right on the screen. Uh, emails, text messages. Just do me one favor, please. If you call me, call me on your cell phone. If you call me on the dealership number, I have a hard time reaching you because I got to get to the gatekeeper. I want to get to you as fast as I possibly can. All right. So Randy and Kim Brinkman, a great resource in our industry. Thank you for all that you do. Uh, amazing, amazing information you provide the Fixed Ops community all the time. And on behalf of the Fixed Ops Roundtable, Kim and Randy, want to want to thank you for all you do. Well, thanks for your continued confidence in us. We really appreciate it. We enjoy it. Everyone, the best in the business right here today. Randy and Kim Brinkman at the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Thanks, Ted.